These are the eyes of a group of young Ulster artists who meet together once a month to discuss their ideas and arrange exhibitions. When I went round to film their paintings and speak to them about their work, I found that although they were all individualists, they shared a common desire to search for new and exciting ideas in art. I also found that they were all influenced by their Ulster environment. They paint familiar Ulster scenes, these scenes that we can see on any trip around the countryside. Noel Miller lives in Derry. My paintings have their roots in the landscape of Inishowen. The great gashes left in a bog where the turf has been cut, dolmens, standing stones, harbours, the sea. I have used these forms in relationships that convey my personal feelings about the landscape. Familiar harbour scenes are also a favourite subject of Richard Croft. The characteristic crescent of his paintings is an idealised aerial view of the harbour which he likes to balance against the solid shapes of the boats with the slender vertical lines of their masts and reflections. The heavy machinery and railway lines of the dockyard seem to have inspired this painting. Richard Croft, like most of his colleagues, teaches for a living and paints in the evenings and at the weekends. He has a new house in Castlereagh with an extensive view over the whole of Belfast, the hills of Ulster looking down on the industry of Belfast, while the shipyards on one side contrast with the fertile Lagan Valley countryside on the other. His mural for the Ulster Brewery seems to have been derived from this view. Several of these young artists are married with small children, and family trips like this provide a good opportunity for sketching. But they all say they rarely paint directly from life. They prefer to sketch an idea and then let it develop in their minds. Cecil McCartney is interested in the study of biology and living organisms. He produces distinctive paintings derived from the shapes and movements found in natural organisms large and small. But if I, if I can give someone, even one person, a sensation of beauty when they look at that painting, if you can, if you can appreciate some of the relationships of the forms and the rhythms that are flowing through it and the continuity of the painting and the way one form, even at one end of the painting, is related completely to, to a form at the other end, of, other end of the painting. If you can realize that, appreciate it, that'll be enough. Whenever you come away from a landscape and have this feeling of the landscape, it's nearly a religious feeling. It's the feeling, the feeling of either the landscape that I've seen and the way it affects me inside or a bit of life has sort of crept into the image that I have seen 
I want to put down. I don't want to paint a meticulous painting of the landscape, branch for branch, and stone for stone. You just want to put down that great feeling. John Brakey speaks clearly of what he is trying to do. The more uh, significance each shape and each form and each colour has, the better. Uh, I think if you pile uh, all these things into a canvas, something, something's bound to come out. I like painting in oils because the fact that you can push around the paint much easier than you can with the watercolour. Paint has a, a lovely uh, quality about it, oil paint, and uh, I like working with it. With poster colour, it, it seems to have a less permanent quality. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems not to be able to bend and twist. You can't to do so much with it. Malcolm Bennett, standing here by his painting of the crucifixion, generally paints landscapes, but he says that he is always searching for something new. Part of this painting business to me is the discovery of new things. Either you happen to see something new or you discover something new on your own canvas, but it's even better than seeing something new on its own. John Pakenham is interested in people and their relationships with each other. In my paintings, I'm trying to portray the very essential isolation and loneliness of figures, not the loneliness that a shy person might have in a crowd, but the very innate isolation that each individual human being has in their continual search for someone to share that isolation or something to banish it completely, such as religion or art. Uh, I reduce the figure, the human figure, to a symbol uh, and I try to make them as anonymous as possible, staring out, isolated, trying, almost asking the viewer to tell them what is behind them or to answer some of their questions. David Crone likes to study the relationship of people to their surroundings. There is a relationship between the landscape and the figures in it. For instance, on the Albert Bridge, I feel there is a tension between the figures and the landscape, and this is expressed as part of the whole rhythm of the landscape. There is a natural rhythm apparent in all landscapes. It should be drawn from the scene, not imposed on it in the painting. All the painters are individualists. As David Crone says, What I paint is me no matter where I'm living. But they agree that they are influenced by their environment. I asked them finally what effect they would like their paintings to have on people looking at them. You know, I think that each painter is adding in some little way to uh, people's awareness, you know, helping them out to see things, what sort of things to see. And uh, also adding, I think, um, to their emotional, you know, life. I believe a painter has a direct emotional quality. I want to increase the level of awareness and increase the level of consciousness of mankind in general, of all men. If it, I don't know whether it will do this or not, but I would be very happy if it would. People often say, well, if I don't do uh, paint something that the public wants, well, this is, uh, to me, 
something that I was fighting as if I can't uh, paint something that expresses something, well then that isn't painting to me. If I paint landscapes um, because this is what the, the public wants and there are landscapes that uh, mean nothing to me, uh, this wouldn't be painting to me at all. It would be just destroying oneself. In nature, these young artists vary from extrovert to introvert from the valuable to the extreme of reticence, and their style and form of painting vary accordingly. But all of them agree on one thing, that they paint only because they enjoy painting. They paint because they have to, and they paint what matters to them. As a group, they are young, often unsure in style and technique, but adventurous. They are seeking the best methods of expressing themselves in the media of their choice. They paint only what they choose and in the style that suits them, in general, they prefer their work to stand and be judged on his own.